Hey everybody, it looks like you got a test coming up and we'll see if we can't get you ready for it uh, in this lesson here. So this is on quantitative reasoning, unit one, module one. So we used to call them chapters and sections in chapters. Now we're calling them modules and units. Anyways, uh, let's get started. So two fortnights have passed from January 3rd to January 31st. How many days long is a fortnight? Well, I've never heard of that word. I actually looked it up. So Anyways, let's go through the math here. So let's first find the number of days that have passed. Okay, whoops, I bumped my, my ring on the table right here. So the days that passed from January 3rd to January 31st, we're just going to subtract is 28 days, okay? So let's write an equation, okay? So two fortnights, we'll call that 2F, is going to equal that 28 days. Then we divide both sides um, uh, by 2. And that's the division property of equality. So when we do that, uh, we get 28 divided by 2 is F equals uh, 14. So a fortnight equals 14 days. Now this is what I found out when I looked up fortnight, you guys. It comes from the Old English language, and it just means a time period of 14 nights. Oh, boy. All right, let's uh, try another one here. So a scale on a map. So remember we did uh, ratios and proportions. So And then so here's a ratio right here. scale on a map is 1 to 8. So the ratio is 1 to 8. So the distance from Cedar Parks, Texas to Austin, Texas on a map is 2.5 inches. Okay, so remember, it's 1 inch equals 8 miles. So how long is the actual distance? So we're going to go ahead and write a scale as the fraction. So the book chose to write the actual over the map. I would have done the map over the actual, but it doesn't matter, you guys. So just as long as you're consistent. So, so the actual distance... Um, is 8 miles for every 1 inch right here. So there's our ratio we're going to use, and we're going to let D be the actual distance uh, from um, uh, Cedar Park to, uh, to Austin, Texas, okay? So with 2.5 being the maps distance. Now remember, the maps distance is goes on the bottom because that's the way this ratio was set up. So it just has to be consistent like that. So the actual over the map is 8 over 1, so we're going to let that be um, uh, the actual distance over the, the maps distance, which is 2.5. And then now we cross multiply. Okay, we get 1D equals 8 times 2.5, which is equal to 20. So the actual distance is 20 miles. Okay, easy enough. All right, find the sum and product of the following measurements uh, using the correct number of significant digits. And we have uh, 15 feet and 25, or sorry, 9.25 feet. So um, this was in our last lesson, you guys, um, actually probably for my class two lessons ago because I split that lesson up into two days. Anyway, so when we, when we add or subtract and we're talking about the rules for significant digits, the sum or difference when we add or subtract it must be rounded to the same place values of the last digit, uh, the digit in the least precise measurement. So this one's the least precise because the most precise has the most decimals carried out. This one's the least precise. This one's rounded in the ones position. So we have to round the sum in the ones position. The product uh, of the quotient, the product or quotient, sorry, must have no more digits than the least precise measurement, no more significant digits. Okay, so again, this is the least precise uh, measurement. It has two significant digits. So whatever answer we get, we got to round it to two significant digits. Okay, so here's the sum. We get 24.25. Okay, so uh, here's the rule again. So the sum or difference must be rounded to the same place value. So we got to round it to the one spot because 15 is rounded to the one. So we're going to round 24.25 to just 24. Okay, all right. The product, you guys, is when we multiply that, we get 138.75. Remember, um, uh, let's see, an area is probably area uh, formula. When we multiply feet times feet, we get feet squared. So just remember, product's usually feet squared or something. But, okay, so here's the rule for significant digits, okay? The product or quotient must have no more significant digits than the least precise measurement. Well, this is the least precise again. It has two significant digits, so we're going to round this to uh, either 130 or 140. Well, this one's closer to 140, so it would be 140 feet squared. See how this is two significant digits? One, two. We don't count that zero unless we have another uh, non-zero digit after it. So this only has these two significant digits right there, okay? All right, so let's solve and let's check the solutions. This is the easy part right here, you guys. Okay, so we're going to solve. We're going to add 12 to both sides, get rid of that minus 12, and we get 42. Now, the second part says check the solution. So we just plug in 42 where Z is, you guys, 
and 42 minus that 12 does equal 30. So just that's how we just check. So here's another one. Negative y over 7 equals 8. So here we're going to um, uh, multiply both sides by negative 7. That way it will get rid of this 7 and that negative right here. A negative times a negative is a positive right there. So the negative 7s are going to cancel right here. We're going to be left with y equals negative 56. All right, to check, we just plug in negative 56 where that y is. Okay, so there's a little negative that got crossed out. So there's the negative. Negative negative is a positive over here. Okay, so we have uh, 56 divided by 7 equals equals 8. Or uh, negative of a negative, or we can do negative 56 over 7 is negative 8, but it's negative negative 8, which is positive 8. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh boy. Okay, so here, 5x plus 13 equals 48. Okay, so when we solve equations like this, we do the order of operations backwards. So we do all the addition and subtraction first. So this says plus 13, so we're going to do the minus 13 on both sides first. You've got to do it to both sides. Okay, now we're going to divide uh, by 5, and it goes in there 7 times. And to check, you guys, 5 times 7 is 35. And when you add 35 and 13, we get 48. Okay, one more of these guys. All right, so remember, when we solve these guys, we've got to do order of operations backwards. So I'm not going to do this divide by this. This is negative 3p. We're going to get rid of this 25 first. So let's subtract 25 from both sides. Okay, so we have negative 3p. Now, this is where my kids make the biggest mistake right here. Negative 11 minus 25. Negative 11 minus 25 is negative 36. So now we can divide both sides by negative 3 because we want to get p all by itself. And kids lose the negatives. Real common error, common uh, algebra 1 error right here. Okay, and this I know this is the integrated one. So here, negative divided by negative is positive. So the negative 3's will cancel, and we get p. And then here, the negatives cancel. 36 divided by 3 is 12. All right, to check, you guys. So 25 minus 3 times 12 uh, does it equal negative 11? Well, 3 times 12 is 36. So this is a negative 36. 25 minus 36 is negative 11. Okay. All right. Uh, the height of a scale uh, model building is 15 inches. The scale is 5 inches to 32 inches. Find the height of the actual building in inches and feet. Okay. All right. So this time I did the model over the actual. The book likes doing the actual over the model. But it's here. It's already set up. 5 over 32 is going to be, this is the model's height, and this is the actual height right here. So what, for every 5 inches, the actual height is 32 inches. Okay. All right. So... Uh, so find the actual height, okay, so the, the scale model is 15, so that's going to go on top, you guys. So 5 over 32 is going to equal 15 over x. Cross multiply, and then you, um, real uh, most kids will go ahead and multiply these, and that's cool if you have a calculator right here. I don't, so I went ahead and divided both sides by 5 first, and then 5 goes into this 15 three times. So it's actually 32 times 3, which is 96 right there, okay? For me, it's easier that way, especially since I don't have a calculator. But if you did, uh, 32 times 15 is some big number, and then when you divide it by 5, you get 96. You should, anyways. All right, let's answer the question. 96 what? What does that mean right there? It says, find the height of the actual building in inches. Well, this is in inches, because all of this stuff was in inches right here. So this is 96 inches. So the height of the building is 96 inches. And 96 divided by 12, because 12 feet per, um, uh, 12 inches per foot, sorry. So you get 8 feet. So 96 inches or 8 feet, okay? So make sure you answer the question in the context of the problem. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough, you guys. All right. So which of the following measurements is least precise? Uh, and how many significant digits does it have? Okay, well, least precise. Well, more precise means uh, the decimals are carried out further. I just copied this from a lesson I did uh uh, earlier. So this one's the most precise. This one's the second most precise. The decimals that are carried out further. This doesn't have any decimals, so this one's the least precise. So that's the least precise. How many significant digits? This time I count that zero because it's in between two non-zero digits. So 101 is the is the least precise, and it has three significant digits. Okay, this one's the most precise right here. It doesn't mean it's the most accurate. The most accurate means there's the less error factor. Remember doing that with the scales? I think it was Eric and his scales and something like that. 
Okay, so this one, if we if it asked us for um, the most precise, it would be this one, and this one has four significance, but it's asking for the least precise. All right, let's try one more, you guys. A square countertop has a side length of 28 inches. Find the perimeter and area of the countertop using the correct number of significant digits. Okay, perimeter just means we're going to add up all four sides. There's our rules again, you guys. So I just slid that down. Here's the perimeter, 112 centimeters, and the area when we multiply. Remember, it's a square, so base times height is 28 times 28. Okay, so the sum or difference for significant digits right here has to be rounded to the same place value as the least precise. So that's the only one that we have right there. So it has to be rounded to the one spot. So that's the answer right there. And then for the uh, the area, the air, the product must have no more significant digits than and this one. This has two significant digits, so we're going to round this to either 78 or 79, and it'll stay at 78, so, seven, so 780 centimeters squared, okay? And this one stays the same right there. All right, if you guys are in my class, I would probably assign you something like that. Take care. Good luck on your test, by the way.